In this video, we'll play through an example kingdom and see if we can use the principles that we just discussed in the previous videos to successfully construct an engine that can beat the computer's big money deck. So here we have a kingdom that's been generated. Let's take a look at it and we'll analyze it for each of the specific components and see if an engine is viable. Well, is there a draw? Yes, uh, I see a few draw cards off the bat. Patrol, plus three cards. This is basically a smithy and it also comes with an extra effect that just checks the top few extra cards and puts extra victory cards in your hand. So if there were estates near the top, it would grab those too. Rabble, another smithy variant, plus three cards, that also comes with an attack that might be helpful because it could slow on the computer a bit. Uh, so each of those are functionally plus two draw. And here we have Enchantress. Enchantress isn't gonna draw us anything uh, on our turn, but when we play it, then next turn it will draw us two cards. So Enchantress is gonna net us one draw over two turns. If, for example, we had two Enchantresses and played one each turn, that would be minus one draw each turn per Enchantress. Uh, so since we're playing one each turn, that's minus one. And then we'd be drawing two cards each turn. So two Enchantresses across two turns is netting us one draw per turn. So we definitely have draw. What about action? We've got village. That's certainly action. Plus one card, plus two actions. And we've got worker's village. It's plus one card, plus two actions, and a buy. So it's basically village, but also plus buy. So we're covered on the action front. Now how about trashing? Well, we have Spice Merchant. This is the card we saw in the draw episode, which lets us trash a treasure. So this can get rid of our coppers for us. And note that it does say plus two cards, but we already covered in the draw episode why this does not count as a draw card. Uh, there's an implicit minus one in that Spice Merchant will take up a spot in our deck. Plus we have to trash a treasure, which reduces our hand size one further, and it's gaining us, uh, or drawing us two cards. Um, but that means it's only breaking even. So Spice Merchant's draw neutral. We couldn't draw our deck with just Spice Merchants. And then a second treasure we have here is Hermit. Hermit lets us trash a non-treasure card, so this can get rid of our estates. Between Spice Merchant and Hermit, we, sh we should be able to get fully trashed pretty easily. Now, what about gainers? Well, let's go back to Hermit. Here we go, our first gainer. Gain a card, cost game up to three. So Hermit can both trash a card and gain a card. This seems pretty versatile. I think uh, Hermit's a strong card in general, and definitely in this deck, so we'll definitely want to be getting uh, at least a Hermit or two. What else? Ironworks. This is basically like Workshop, if you know Workshop from the base set, which lets you gain a card costing up to four. Um, but although Ironworks costs one more, it also comes with a minor benefit. For example, if we gain actions with Ironworks, they come non-terminally. Whereas Workshop is a terminal action card, with Ironworks, it's plus one action, so we're breaking even on actions, uh, even if it's uh, not drawn as cards. It's not really a cantrip, um, but it is non-terminal, which can be potentially helpful. And then lastly, Bureaucrat is also a gainer. We can gain a Silvers. Uh, that could potentially be helpful if we wanted silvers, um, but I'll go ahead and say now, Bureaucrat is certainly a very weak card in general, and uh, this kingdom's no exception. I don't see us getting that. Silver is like an okay card, but there's definitely better stuff to gain, and so the fact that Bureaucrat can only get us that is pretty weak. The attack is not the strongest. Uh, I don't think Bureaucrat is gonna be very worth getting here. And then, I mean, we talked about gainers, but we should also talk about plus buy. Worker's Village is plus buy, so we're definitely covered uh, for plus buy. We'll be able to buy multiple provinces if we want to. And uh, there's also plus buy on Spice Merchant. Now this one's one of those ones where you should be a little bit careful because you have to trash a treasure to get it. So Spice Merchant's only gonna be plus buy as long as we have extra coppers that we were willing to sacrifice to it. Uh, so this is not gonna be a very reliable plus buy, but we should be fine anyway because we have Worker's Village. Um, other cards left in the kingdom to talk about? Well, there's Peddler here. Peddler, that's a cantrip. So mentally subtract out, plus one card, plus one action, and you'll see the real effect, which is Ke Peddler. Uh, Peddler is just giving us plus one coin. That's pretty good. Um, I mean, Copper gives plus one coin, but Copper has that big implicit drawback of you have to draw a Copper to get the Copper. So for every Copper in your deck, you have to draw through one extra card. So if you wanted 10 coins from 10 Coppers, you have to add 10 extra draw to your deck, which is a pretty tall order. Peddler, put 10 Peddlers in your deck, you got 10 coins, and it is zero extra draw. Peddler totally covers its own draw cost and action cost, so it's basically 10 coins at zero opportunity cost. Uh, so Peddler is you know, essentially free money if you get it. Um, it seems pretty useful. How do you get it? Well, it costs eight, but it does have this little uh, description here that says um, it costs two less per action you have in play. So if we could get four actions in play, Peddler would actually cost zero. Now, does that mean it's entirely free? We need to take all of them? Well, no, because it will still cost us a buy. Remember we talked about in the buy episode, every card implicitly costs one buy. And so if we wanted Peddler, we will have to have surplus buys to pick it up. If we only have one buy, it doesn't matter whether we have two coins or six. Um, 
peddler costing zero is still going to spin or only buy for the turn. So buying a peddler, whether it's zero or not, would trade off with buying, you know, a rabble or a patrol or a gold. Um, so what we really want here, I think, even more so than usual with peddler is it would be nice to have some surplus buys. Because if we have six coins and say four buys, we can buy the card we really want, like say a patrol. And then with three buys left over, even if we have no money left, if we can get the peddler cost down to zero, we can just buy three peddlers without three extra buys. So peddler's a card that makes me really want plus buy. Makes worker's village look pretty nice. And then one last card that uh, might go unnoticed at first is Madman. Uh, Madman is plus two actions, so it's a village. And it draws plus one card per card in your hand, which is probably going to be at least four. So it's village and draw. Pretty phenomenal. What's the catch? Well, first off, you can only play it once. Once you play it, it goes straight back to the pile. Uh, so it's quite ephemeral. Um, but secondly, how do you get it? Well, it's not in the supply, so you can't buy it. The only way to get it is via Hermit's little effect here, which is if you uh, play Hermit and then discard it from play at the end of the turn, if you didn't buy any cards, you can gain the Madman if you also trash the Hermit. So that's a pretty steep cost. You have to buy the Hermit, trash the Hermit again to get the Madman. The Madman, you only get it once, and you have to forego all buys that turn. Uh, so Madman is a little bit too difficult to get for us to plan on building an engine around it. Um, every once in a while it's viable, but uh, certainly this, this cost is just a little bit too difficult to work around for Madman to be nice here. We might pick one up naturally anyway, since we're getting Hermits, and this situation could sort of arise spontaneously, but we're not going to plan to build a deck around Madman. But just be aware that that's there and technically available in the kingdom. It does count as action and draw. And then lastly, we should talk about the events real quick. Save. Save says plus one buy. You might uh, initially be tempted to think that this is a source of plus buy. It is not. We said in the buy episode that this just makes save buy neutral. Remember that events, just like cards, only to spend a buy to get them. And so if I want to get the benefit of save, I have to spend a buy on the save. I'll spend a buy, get a buy back. All I've done is break even. So when it says plus one buy on this card, what it's really saying is you don't have to waste a buy on this. If you have one extra coin, you can go ahead and buy it whether or not you have an extra buy as well. Because buying save will not cost you a buy, it'll just cost you a coin. And so if we have an extra coin, we can get this little effect, which is set aside a card from your hand and uh, put it in your hand at the end of the turn. That's not bad. We might use that once or twice if we happen to have surplus coins lying around. And then lastly, windfall. So windfall, for five coins and just one buy, we can get three golds into our deck. That seems pretty good. You know, gold is a six cost card, so Normally getting three golds would cost 18 and three buys. Five one buys a steal. So what's the catch? Well, your deck and your discard pile have to be empty. How do you get your deck and discard pile empty? Well, for both of those to be empty, all of the cards in your entire deck need to either be in your hand or in play. So this is only gonna be accessible after you've drawn through your entire deck. Now that's a bit unfortunate for the computer, you know, because the computer loves to play big money and a big money strategy would love to shove three gold into its deck per turn. But there's just no way a big money deck is ever going to be able to draw its entire deck. That requires trashing your cards, drawing your cards, and that's a lot more than the computer is going to be trying to do. It could be beneficial for us though, right? If we want to build an engine, we can get thin pretty fast, and then we can put a bunch of payload into our deck real fast by just drawing through a deck and then buying windfall to have three extra golds for next turn. This is definitely something worth looking out for, and what it suggests to me is even more than usual, we probably want to get thin very fast by trashing a spice merchant hermit because once we're drawing our deck, we can quickly add payload. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and try playing the kingdom. We'll start the game. Let's go ahead and give the computer a two turn head start, uh, just to see if we can really build a competitive engine. I'm just gonna go ahead and pass my first turns, essentially giving the computer two turns for free. All right, so now it's turn three for the computer, turn one for us. Uh, so we know we have four here, so we'll have three next turn. What are we buying? Well, we definitely want to get trashed. So I think a natural candidate here is Spice Merchant to trash our coppers, Hermit to trash our estates. Anything else worthwhile? Uh, the one other card I think worth considering in the opening is Ironworks, because um, it's a gainer, and so we can quickly start gaining a bunch of cost, uh, cards. There's a bunch of cards we want here, right? We can get uh, Draw. Uh, this is cheap enough that Ironworks can grab it. We can get Villages, like uh, Worker's Village. And we said we want the plus buy anyway, because that'll combo well with Peddler. So the other option I'm seeing is Ironworks Hermit. Um, we'll be a little slower on trashing, but a little faster on gaining ancient components. Uh, I think I'm going to try the Spice Merchant strategy. Uh, like I said, Windfall makes me want to get trashed very fast. 
but I think Ironworks Hermit is the other competitive opening uh, in this kingdom. All right, so we've got uh, three again. Let's just buy a second Hermit. We'll trash a copper. We'll play Hermit. Now, Hermit can trash cards from either your discard pile or your hand. You can only trash estates, but it can trash from a whole variety of locations. It doesn't really matter whether I trash the estates in my discard pile or my hand. Um, so I'll just go ahead and trash the one from the discard pile. And uh, what do I want to gain? I could... This would be a good turn to get a Madman. We said Madman's really strong, even if fleeting. Uh, so I could just elect not to buy any cards this turn and turn my Hermit into a Madman. I think I'll do that. But if I do that, I will lose my Hermit. So I think I'm going to get another Hermit knowing that this one's going bye-bye. Now the restriction here is you can't buy any cards this turn. It doesn't mean I can't make any buys. So I can still, for example, save a copper. And that is not gonna prevent this uh, little Hermit Madman exchange from occurring. Yeah, so sure enough, I've got my Madman. And the fact that I saved a card means I now have a six card hand, because this one of these coppers was saved from the previous turn. Madman draws one card per card in hand. So this is quite nice. I can uh, play all that. Uh, now I can trash an estate. Um, what card do I want here? I know that whatever card I gain, I can draw again um, because I'll play my Spice Merchant, trash two coppers, and then I'll draw those last two cards in my deck, the one here plus the one I gain. Um, but I'm only going to have one action. And so Spice Merchant, that's non-terminal. Um, this doesn't count against actions. Hermit, however, is terminal. So if I gain an Enchantress or a Hermit, I won't be able to play it this turn. And that's a little unfortunate. I could gain a silver, um, but I, you know, I'd be hitting like six coins, but I don't really want a gold right now. I'm still building my deck. I'm not adding payload yet. And I don't really have any plus buy that would help me um, use that uh, to buy multiple cards. So what do I want then? I think I'll just go ahead and get a village because I'm gonna want that village eventually. Let's draw through this. And uh, we'll go ahead and trash the estate, and we'll gain an enchantress, because at the moment I have no draw cards. Now I could windfall here. Um, certainly one option would have been, for example, just to, to not play that hermit, um, not gain a card, and leave my discard pile empty. Uh, that doesn't seem like a very viable option yet. First off, I want to get trashed quickly, so I'd much rather be trashing this estate. Um, and so not trashing the estate is meaning I don't get trashed very fast. Uh, secondly, I don't really have plus buy yet to make productive use of the golds even though I get them. I have 9, 15, uh, 14 coins in my deck, um, but only one buy, so the golds wouldn't really be helping me yet. Uh, so I'd much rather hold off a turn or two and get windfall in a minute. Um, so I'll just add the draw. I have no draw cards. And then I want plus buy, because we said pretty soon I'll be able to be getting um, some golds, plus we want those peddlers. Um, so I could get Worker's Village directly. I think I'd like to get an Ironworks, because this Ironworks can gain me you know, a Worker's Village per turn. So I'll just save this village for next turn and get an Ironworks with the intention to start getting Worker's Villages relatively soon. All right, the computer's already scoring. That's turn eight for them. This is you know, turn six for us. Uh, we didn't find our iron uh, our ironworks yet. That's unfortunate. Do I want to trash this hermit? I mean, it is a gainer. It can give me three cost cards. So maybe I don't. Let's just leave it around. I'll gain another enchantress, and I'll gain another village. And I could save a copper and buy a peddler. I think I just want a second ironworks though. I do want a lot of villages. Because if I get all our workers' villages now, that's uh, plenty of peddlers in the long term. All right, computers up to two provinces. That doesn't seem all too worrisome. Let's go ahead and get our ironworks uh, going, getting our workers' villages. I'll play an enchantress for draw. I will play a hermit. Can gain another enchantress. So two options here. I could buy a peddler. I mean, it is free, and I've got one buy that I can't spend anything else. I could also pass to get that madman. Which is also not unappealing. Hmm. I think I'll just go ahead and take the Madman. We'll be able to pick up Peddlers at very little opportunity cost in a minute anyway, once we've got a bunch of workers' villages. 
So let's draw. We can play our madman. Now we've got plenty of cards. So now let's think. Well, I'm overdrawing my deck, at least for this turn. Right? I have one more draw coming in from Village, one from Orca's Village, potentially two from Spice Merchant. So the thing I'm thinking about right now is I could gain cards with Ironworks first. Right? I can play these before playing the draw cards, put some cards into the discard pile, and immediately draw them up. So what cards do I want in the short term? Well, I've got four actions already, plus two more coming in. I've only got three terminals. Uh, so I could definitely add a few more terminal actions without being over terminal, at least for this turn. Uh, so I think I'll probably try to do that. What if I just gain me? Uh, well, first I can get an Ironworks. Let's just gain the Ironworks and drop back up. No cost to doing that. And then I can gain, let's just say, one, two, three. So I have six villages and only three terminals. I could just gain three Enchantresses. And now we'll have plenty of draw. Now a little bit low on coins. So I can't afford Windfall yet this turn, but I can't afford a bunch of Peddlers. I have three coins, so all I really need for next turn is going to be, well, I was gonna say I was just gonna take two Peddlers and then buy Windfall, but I'd also like to trash a Cocklewood. Spice Merchant will really reduce my payload by one. So let's just take uh, three Peddlers. In fact, I'm gonna undo this. Let's do this a little more strategically. But now I'm taking three Peddlers anyway. I don't need all three coins. I can save one copper for next turn. Take three feathers this way. Now next turn, we'll definitely draw our deck and we'll definitely be able to afford a windfall. And then our deck's really gonna kick off. All right. So I do need villages before I can play any of my terminal actions, and which in this case is Enchantress and Hermit. But I know that if I play my villages, I've got this plus one card that I'm not utilizing because I'm drawn into nothing. So I think step one here is I wanna put something in my discard. So when I play the villages or the peddlers, I'm at least drawing something from it. I'm gonna play my Ironworks first. Um, well, we had plenty of Enchantresses last turn. So we had plenty of draw for this turn. Uh, I'd like that to still be the case. So I'd like to gain some extra Enchantresses, I think, to set up for next turn also having a good draw. Because remember, next turn, we're gonna have a bunch more golds on our deck. Um, that'll take a bit of draw to get through. So let's gain ourselves some Enchantresses. Um, we'll use our Hermit and not Trash to gain another Enchantress. And uh, that's four Enchantresses. Let's just go ahead and get the last one. We'll have five apiece. Nice even turns. Play our peddlers. As it turns out, we didn't even need to use our spice merchant for draw. So I could just trash this for two coins and a buy. But the thing I'm buying anyway only costs five. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use it for cord cards in action. I don't need the cards, but if I use it for action, I can do that while still having a lot action left over to play another enchantress. Now I can buy two peddlers and a windfall. I buy the peddlers first though, they'll go into my discard pile, windfall will fail. So I'm gonna buy the windfall first and then add two peddlers. All right. So I'm gonna get draw from my enchantresses, start drawing through our deck. All right, so we're not quite making it through our deck. So what this indicates to me is we should definitely be adding uh, a little more draw power now. So we can go ahead and gain some workers' villages. Um, that'll help us gain the rest of the peddlers very quickly. You could play a fifth enchantress, but you'd play a hermit. The only thing is the hermit's gonna gain from here, silver or village. Don't really need the silver, we'll get plenty of gold from windfall. Uh, and we have plenty of villages now. We'll just play the enchantress. We can save that hermit for next turn if we want. Let's first consider what we're buying. We probably just want two draw cards and some peddlers. So we can definitely afford to save it. Let's buy some rambles. Patrol's nice, but all it does is find victory cards. And we've already trashed all the victory cards from our deck. So patrol doesn't seem very enticing. Rapple at least has a little bit of attack, which might slow the computer down slightly. All right. So from here on out, this engine should work perfectly every turn. We've got plenty of draw. We've got plenty of reliability because we'll see 15 cards at the beginning of every turn, two cards per enchantress plus five starting cards. So there's no chance we just draw the wrong cards in dud. Uh, so I think from here on out, we should be totally fine. Uh, we'll be able to win this turn. We could pile out pretty easily. We could easily gain the rest of the ironworks and the peddlers. But I don't think we could do that while scoring enough points to also take a lead. 
So let's just set up for next turn. How many terminal actions can I play? Well, I've got five actions plus a village. I've got five enchantresses plus a hermit. Um, so that's just enough to cover this. I do kind of want to add payload now though. Um, I've, like I said, I've got plenty of draw and this can gain silvers, but if it gains a silver, it's going to count as a terminal action because I won't get that plus action I've been getting formerly. So I think what I'll have to do is use one of these to get an extra village. Now I can use another one to get an extra silver. And uh, we can get another village from Hermit as well. And now we have enough to get yet another silver from this. Play that. And now we have enough to cover the cost of all of our enchantresses, the action cost. We go ahead and play those peddlers for the money. Play all the enchantresses for the draw. And windfall first while our deck and discard are still both empty. And we can go ahead and add some more draw. Um, one, two, three. And do we need more draw? Well, I mean, we're going to draw our whole deck anyway. Um, maybe let's take one more gold. Village, draw, village, 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 draw. And sure enough, uh, we have more than sufficient draw. If this ever stops lagging, at least. There we go. Now we're at the end of our deck. We've got at least four draw left from Peddler. Potentially up to six if we wanted to trash two, uh, trash a card to Spice Merchant to draw two more. So now I think we can start very reasonably looking at potentially piling out into the game. Let's see. There's one Peddler left. That's me functionally free. Uh, so that'll be a, a second pile empty with Enchantress. I do need to get two provinces, a duchy, and an estate to take a points lead, though. How many coins is that? That's uh, 16 plus 5 is 21, 23. How many coins do I have? Well, I've got uh, 7 times 3, so 21, 25, 27, 32 coins in total so far, plus 4 more from Peddler. So I've got more than enough money to buy all the, um, the province stuff I need. Um, and the peddler will be free. That'll be one, two, three, four buys. Uh, can I empty a third pile? Well, that's the easy candidate's workers' village. I can definitely do this. So let's just go ahead and gain three workers' villages. We can draw those. And uh, we can go ahead and gain the estate directly with Hermit. But we have more than enough money now to end this game. And again, this is despite being, remember, behind two turns. We played 12 turns, the computer played 14, and we're already running in circles around it. We buy a province, province, duchy, we've got the points lead, we buy our peddler, we buy our worker's village, three piles are empty, so the game will end, and we can afford an extra province. There you go. So this engine was very quickly able to outscore the computer, uh, and hopefully this demonstrates the main principles of building an engine.